their last drive that they were playing, you see a senior like Keandre Jones running down for the opposite end, chasing a guy down, making a tackle. Our offensive line did a good job at the end of the game, just uh, fighting a little bit more. And me, I think we can build uh, with that type of fight. Obviously, we need to find a consistency with that. As with every aspect of our program, consistency is critical. And we're still a work in progress. Uh, when we look at this game, uh, early in the game, we wanted to control the tempo, which I thought we did a really good job of on offense. We slowed the game down. We snapped the ball late in the shot clock. But we didn't come away with points in the red zone. We had the interception early in the uh, game, and then we missed the field goal. And to me, when you do that, you shorten the game like we tried to do there to keep our defense off the field. We've got to execute, especially in the red area, which we didn't do. Uh, I thought two of the three phases tried to execute our plan. I thought our defense was a lot better today against the run. I thought they did a really good job uh, of getting off the field some on third down. Um, obviously, we gave up some explosive plays that we'd like to, to not see us give up. Uh, the area I'm concerned, obviously, coming from this game is the way our special teams play. We've been playing pretty good special teams and allow a kick return to open the game, a huge momentum play. Uh, I thought we responded the right way in the other phases, but you know, missing field goals, our punting game was uh, very inconsistent today, which hadn't been a big issue. Uh, and then again, giving up points on, on, on special teams. Those are things you can't do. So um, again, I, I'm happy with the effort and would like to see us build on that. So with that, I'll open up to some questions. The Jackers Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Which obviously is pretty formidable, or was it just lack of execution on your team's I mean, without having watched the tape, I'd say we did probably a little bit of both there, Don. Um, we tried to take a couple of shots there when we got the high red zone. Uh, I know we took a sack down in there when we were just throwing a quick game, uh, something quick, and we ended up missing some blocks on the inside, and it got us out of uh, being in, in a favorable third, uh, third down situation. So I would say a little bit of both, their defense and our lack of execution down in the red area. Coach, uh, the, the big punt in the second quarter for Michigan, did you feel that that was somewhat of a turning point, maybe instead of figuring out, it led to a touchdown drive? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say the turning point of it, but it did allow them to steal some points at the end of the first half, which we were trying to guard against, uh, you know, when you shorten the game like we tried to do, and, and we were effectively doing that. We were able to run the ball efficiently early in the game, and we were in some manageable third downs, which allowed us to run the ball. We went for on one of the fourth down situations, and that gave us a chance to keep our defense off the field. But uh, yeah, I do think that uh, the fake field goal there allowed them to steal points before the half, and, and that's tough to allow that to happen. Coach, uh, what do you think is the biggest thing that needs to be fixed offensively? Man, we got a lot of things that need to be fixed. Um, obviously, uh, protection. You know being able to protect, take care of our quarterback, uh, our quarterback's execution in the passing game, uh, receivers creating separation versus man coverage. Uh, you know, I thought that in one area we were doing a, a decent job enough of is running the football. And I've seen us make those improvements up front, but I do feel to be balanced in the style of offense that I want to play, we've got to be able to throw the football, protect the quarterback, quarterback make the right reads and guys win versus man coverage on the perimeter. Coach, what went into the decisions about when to go with Lance LeJean and where does Tyler DeSue fit in the quarterback picture? Um, you know, all week long we had a plan for Lance. Um, we're allowed with the four game red shirt rule to utilize our players and we're going to do it. You know, we're trying to find ways to win and if we feel like I bring something to the table from a skill set standpoint, 
that helps us try to move the ball and score points, we're going to use them. And, uh, you know, we have some games and some young guys. I think we played 18, maybe now 18 true freshmen this year with Lance, um, again, playing in some meaningful reps. But we had that plan going into the game. Obviously, with Piggy's uh, health, and he's, you know, he was available. But we went into this game thinking Lance gave us some, some things that uh, to help us move the ball. So, you know, we'll continue to watch it uh, to try to see if we can get as much out of them without necessarily burning the red shirt. But we're going to try to find ways to win games. Coach, uh, Josh's first start since the Rutgers game, first impressions of uh, how he carried himself out there too? I mean, I think he managed the things uh, the way we wanted to do it. Obviously, like I said, in the first half, uh, our goal was to try to keep our defense off the field, knowing that Michigan was going to try to run the ball and we wanted to shorten the game and try to keep it close. And, you know, I thought he gave us a chance with how he operated the offense. Now, obviously not scoring in the red zone kind of uh, curtailed our ability to keep the game close. You know, the tip interception there and then, you know, taking some sacks down in the red area. Um, and that's a little bit on everybody, not just Josh. You know, we've got to protect them and do a good job of making sure we um, protect them and guys get open for us. Um, going off that with, with Josh, uh, not starting the game with, with the great first series and, and then the early interception, what, what gave you the confidence that he was still the, the guy um, as opposed to last week when, when you didn't maybe think that he was quite there yet? I mean, he was the guy going into the game. So, you know, last week, Piggy obviously had taken most of the reps and Josh was the backup. And when he went in, I told you I didn't have the confidence but it's just seeing how he operated that one series. But all week long, he's taking the number one reps and, and, and going into the game, he was the guy. I thought he operated the offense uh, the way we wanted to, obviously establishing the run was something we wanted to do. And I thought Javon Deke and, and Ann did a great job of running downhill <laughs> four or five yards. Uh, Clip for the most part, which kept us ahead of the sticks, and uh, but not scoring when you shorten the game uh, put us in a tough situation where it was playing catch up, and that forced us to speed the tempo up a little bit in the second half. Uh, Coach Phil Jones from SB Nation Radio. Uh, you talked about consistency going on this year. Um, what's something that you could do to probably get you guys to stay consistent? For the rest of the season and look for better execution? Well, I think consistency starts with maturity. You know, when you play, we have so many guys in and out of the lineup with some of the injuries we've had, with some of the young players we play. Consistency is just a part of the maturation process. And as much as we want to speed it up and as hard as we push to speed it up, it's part of the growth. And our program is a developmental program right now where we have to develop the the skill, we have to develop the talent, we have to develop the football intelligence within our team. Um, you know, and when it clicks, you know it clicks. Um, and so we're still striving, but it's a work in progress that, you know, every day you gotta coach them and you've got to make sure that they understand the standard and how you want to play in all three phases and you continue to push them to that standard. Uh, add on to that, do you think we'll see more younger players coming in to finish off the rest of the season? We've played 17 already true freshmen. So uh, at some point in the game, so I don't know how many more we have left. I think we signed 23. And, you know, we'll continue to use the four game red shirt. We are well aware of who's played and what games. And we're again trying to develop players um, while still at the same time, our goal is to win. And we'll continue to put plans together to win. Um, we won't, for the sake of developing a player, give up the ability to try to win a game. That's not gonna happen. But we've played a lot of young players, and they've played some meaningful minutes, and we'll continue to do that. Coach, uh, how deflating is it when you see the opening kickoff go back the other way 97 yards, then you have a three and out, and then they score off a short punt? I mean, you work all week, and then you're down 14-0 real quick. Well, uh, I try to practice what I preach. I don't look at the scoreboard, Dave. But, uh, obviously, I'm disappointed when the, the all goes running down the field on the first kickoff return, but it's so what now what? You know, so what now what? I mean, we can't hold the tent and the game is over. So we went and kicked it off and we returned one, we went three and out, so what now what? And you just keep playing the game. And as I told the guys, we don't want to look up and worry about the score or worry about the culmination of it until zero's on the clock. And I thought that's where I saw us make strides as a team today. And that's how you got to play. That's the standard in which we're going to play around here. 